This video is sponsored by Squarespace, but that is for later. So first thing we need is we need kind of geometry that we want to segment. So I'm just going to make kind of like a long strip here. And because I want this to have some thickness, because there are going to be chunks, I extrude it. There is a add-on called Cell Fracture, so you can just hit this and it will kind of use horrible default settings. You can get this more interesting by increasing the noise and then it'll create a random pattern. Add a particle system. Have all your particles immediately available. I'm going to go for 250 components. Cell Fracture. Make sure you say use all 250. Turn off the noise. Click OK. Awesome. Each of these needs to move. So select everything. Shift click one of them. And we are going to add rigid bodies. They fall. We need some kind of platform. So just put it slightly below. Give it some thickness. Apply rotation and scale so everything works. And then in rigid body, you're going to add another. Click animated so it doesn't move with gravity and whatever. And now we have uh, this crumbling. Looks a bit jank. And uh, more importantly, everything crumbles in the beginning before we even launch things. To fix that, select all these segments. So you can just select objects. Shift click one of them. And we want to connect the pieces. So if I have a piece over here and a piece over here, we want a constraint that basically says keep these near each other. Unless, of course, they're like torn apart in some sense. So you do connect rigid bodies. This will take a bit. Select these constraints. And this is going to be in a group or a collection. So now when I click play, you can see most of these stay connected. You can see some of them don't. And that's because our connection kind of layout could be better. Again, run a connection. But this time, instead of selected to active, which just kind of randomly places them, I'm going to do chain by distance. This makes a lot more sense because nearby pieces are now connected based on their distance. So I'm going to do a UV sphere, make it high subdivision. And let's kind of keyframe this. So I for keyframe 30, maybe 40 frames down move it across the scene, add a keyframe, just like the uh, ground rigid body animated. And now ugh, it's kind of like dragging everything with it, but it looks pretty interesting. Actually, you can select all these constraints, shift click, and now we can see our rigid body constraint. Don't just click breakable, right? But hold alt, right? Hold alt and then click it. This is going to apply basically our selection to everything. Let's see what this looks like. Kind of the same. And this is because they're not breaking very easily. So again, alt click, I'm going to set the threshold for what it's going to break at two. So I can break more easily. Click play. Beautiful. It looks good, but it kind of like slides the whole ground around. I want this to just kind of like break the middle section. Now, other tutorials will basically say to add basically kind of a collider here. So you kind of extrude it up, whatever. There's a way easier and more effective way to do this. I'm just going to select the pieces that are on the boundary. Select whatever you want, but these are going to be the pieces that do not move. Shift click. And then in rigid body, again, alt click to animate it so that they all don't move. And now you can see that uh, they remain still. Uh, clearly, the constraints aren't very strong. You know what we're doing by now? Increase the threshold. I think kind of the main issue is the sphere is a bit too tall. So under delta transform, so I don't need a rekeyframe, just kind of bring this down a little. Another way to make this not kind of explode is to make the motion a bit slower. So now we can say, oh, take 60 keyframes. And now you can see just kind of displaces this in a uh, normal way. Much more interesting is if our sphere collider looked a bit different. So edit mode, proportional editing, you can just kind of like fuck around with the model. So let's see what this does. By the way, anything you do, we want this reflected. So add a mesh, it will look a bit more interesting and different. But if you want this kind of automated in the collider, you just add a displace modifier. What are we displacing by a random texture that is going to be clouds, make it less intense. And now we have a, a more interesting shape. Another thing we can do is we can have it rotate. So keyframe rotation, frame 60. Let's have this rotate a little. So it's doing something more interesting to make these kind of, again, more stationary. You can either make gravity stronger or the pieces heavier so they don't just fling around like they're easy to move. Select all of these shift click in the rigid body settings. Let's make them four kilograms. Actually, let's increase our gravity a little. So instead of negative 9.8, let's make it negative 12, make an object, make a geometry nodes. And instead of the original geometry, I'm going to import in a collection called fragments. Let's view what that looks like. And now you can see all of this is here. In fact, the collider should probably not be part of this. So for the sphere, just throw it into a different collection. OK, here we have our object. And obviously, the next thing to do is to spawn some grass. We need the real geometry, so I'm going to realize it. So we have all the uh, vertex data. Distribute points on faces. Each one of these is going to represent grass. And the beauty of this is you can see the points actually move with our geometry. And for each of these, I'm going to instance a kind of like a grass instance, right? I'm going to do this with a, a curved line. Let's make it less tall. So our scale should be kind of randomized. So instead of 0 to 1, let's make it 0 to 2.1. We take this, we combine it with the original. And you're going to see now they have grass particles. But if we wireframe, you can see that some of these grass particles are spawned. They are spawned on the bottom, right? Whereas they should only be spawned on the top. So you might think simple, right? Position, separate. We're looking at the Z component like this. We say where Z is greater than some number. Bring that down a little. And we say kind of use the selection. So say use the selection. And initially that does work, right? But then as these particles move, when some of them kind of dip below, we're changing the uh, distribution. Here you can see this kind of pretty well. This is not what we want because the position, what is above a certain level, that in itself is changing. So here's a nice little trick I learned about. We now have this bake node, which lets us kind of take whatever's going on and say, don't change it. Connect this to the bake, choose a frame. I'm going to choose frame one, click bake. And now when we view this, it's going to bake frame one. Nothing is going to change. I'm just going to separate the top from the bottom, separate geometry. We're going to look at where this is greater than some value. So I'm going to sample the 
index because we need information from here to send over there. The index is going to be the same because they have the same number of faces and points and all this. This is a Boolean, true or false, connect this here. And now you can see we've isolated the top component, right? And you can do the opposite to get the basically everything else. This is what I am going to distribute points on, which of course just kind of works automatically because it knows where to do that. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Are you trying to make a website? Are you that kind of person? Well, if you're messing around with HTML and hosting your own thing, it's nonsense. Doing it yourself is hard. Doing it with Squarespace is easy, hard, easy. Three features that are going to be helpful for you with Squarespace. The first of which is analytics. So you know who is going to your website demographic type information. Numero dos is they have a asset library. What that means is any image, video, audio, whatever can be hosted over at Squarespace's cloud. And number three, if you are using your website to make money and you need to sell things online, then Squarespace is perfect because they accept every form of payment, whether it be Visa, the MasterCard, the PayPal, Square. Head over to Squarespace and make your first website. And when you are ready to take it and launch, you can use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. For the curve line, give it more geometry by saying each um, piece of grass you can have four vertices. What I can do is I can realize these instances. So now they have actual geometry data and I can distort them. So set position, how do I want to change the position? Classic trick, I'm going to subtract by 0.5. You're going to see why I'm doing this. For the top input, I'm going to use a noise texture. The reason I'm subtracting by 0.5 is if you don't do this, everything's just going to kind of move 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 along this vector. Of course, this is pretty intense, so we can scale it. When this is zero, nothing happens. And then, you know, you can scale it like that. Although, of course, the issue is I want the grass to be rooted so that when we distort, it can't move the bottom segment. Easy fix, use the spline parameter. We're going to take this and multiply it by a smaller number, see if this does what we want. Yes, it does, right? You can see all these roots are now fixed. Spline parameter is great because it tells us kind of the factor of how tall we are on the curve. So this is going to be zero. This is going to be one. And then we have kind of like things in between. You want to kind of choose the quality of this. Right now, it's kind of looking like a carpet. So we change the noise itself. Add a bit of detail, add a bit of roughness. This is probably the best thing you can do. And as we add more particles, this is going to look better and better. That, of course, moves with our uh, system. We want the curve to be a mesh. For the profile curve, you want to be careful if you set this to just like a curved circle. It's going to be a lot of compute. Let's bring down the radius. This is going to add 2.8 million uh, vertices. Bring the resolution down to four. So they're kind of these squares. But honestly, you cannot tell when you're zoomed out. We want the thickness of it to be the tallest right here or the biggest. And then as it goes up, this grass should basically pinch. We are going to set the radius of the curve again to use this uh, spline parameter uh, from before because that tells us how far along the curve we are. Connect this to the radius. Clearly, we have this inverted. So I'm just going to reverse this with a mix. So instead of going from zero to one, we're going to go from uh, one to zero. There we go. That reverses it. So looks like that. Additionally, we can give the tip just a bit of thickness, right? I just want to correct these uh, fragments here that basically look too clean. Well, this is easy to do because our fragments are already baked, right? So their motion isn't uh, going to change. Although probably the best way to do this is to say explicitly bake from frame one to 100 click bake. So in that tutorial, I saw they kind of did the obvious thing where you remesh. I'm going to use sharp because this is a pretty sharp object. And you can see with this remesh, we have more geometry. You don't need too much because all I want to do is kind of distort this a little. So I'm going to displace again. We've done this before. You use a cloud texture. So select your fragments, shift click the one that we did it for control L and then copy these modifiers. So now in our simulation that should have the grass and everything, you can see the grass isn't spawning everywhere. And this makes sense because our baked frame here it is, uh, isn't updated. So you delete the cache, you click bake again, and now all our info should uh, transfer. We play this. It should take a bit longer because of this uh, more geo. Can we do even better? Yes, right? These are still looking a bit too clean. So remember how we isolated the top. We can also isolate everything else that isn't the top. And on this, I want to distribute some points. And these points are basically going to represent some like extra soil or whatever. Basically a sphere. I'm just going to do an icosphere. So just kind of bring down the radius and also randomize the radius. I like this to be a constant uniform kind of scaling. So now we have something like this. And this is going to be kind of like our second layer of uh, detail here. So let's give this uh, more geometry and distort it so it's not so easy to see what's going on. We can copy this from before. We're going to set position by our noise function. So now you can see it's kind of breaking up the shape. You can make that a bit more intense. I'm going to randomize the uh, rotation so they're not all facing the same way. Negative pi to pi covers all our radian rotations. And maybe we do want to randomize the scale as kind of like a vector. That way they don't look so uh, uniform. So it's kind of scaled this way. Yeah, you can see how this is looking more like a rock uh, than without. Don't need to be so harsh on it. In cycles, already we're getting like a, a, a crazy quality bump, to be honest. So name of the game is just adding materials. I'm just going to make a few of them. The first of these should be a grass material. And the second of these should be a ground material. Maybe at this point, we can even get rid of the clean sections, right? So instead of bringing over this entire realize instances over here, that gives us our chunks. I can just kind of bring the inverted before you can kind of see the clean sections and after it's kind of up to you. And I want to isolate everything that is and isn't the ground so I can define materials. So this is going to be ground and this is going to be ground. So I'm going to join these one at a time. So here's our ground for the ground. I want to set material to use the ground material. And then for the rest of this, which is the grass, really, we only have two things to connect here. We're going to use grass. So grass here, ground here. And let me just kind of clean up what we have going on so we
see. We start by bringing in our geometry and splitting it into its relevant components. This top section is for the uh, ground, and then this bottom is for creating the grass. So for the ground material, nothing fancy. I'm just going to make it kind of darker so it looks closer to ground. And how shiny should this be? Not very, right? Because it's dirt, of course. And then for the grass, very simple material uh, for the grass. You can literally just use a translucent BSDF. You set that translucency to kind of this green that, of course, is kind of like toxically saturated right now. And most importantly, we haven't included motion blur, which is really going to pad this effect. I think kind of like a last bit of detail is we just add a basic particle pass, nothing fancy, right? The sphere should basically be what is emitting uh, the particles, I guess. Kind of the issue is it's rotating, so it's kind of hard to say where the particles should be emitting from. We can add a basic particle system. So this is what that would look like. Obviously, the particles would be much smaller, and they'd be emitting upwards, right? What, what if we add object velocity? Yeah, the issue is that this is rotating. So maybe let's make a copy of this. This is going to be the particle uh, version. It shouldn't have any of these rigid bodies or whatever. And additionally, it shouldn't be rotating. And now when we add a bit of z-axis, it should know what the upwards direction is. Awesome. So select these objects. We make them collision. Let's also have this only emit from the uh, top. So you can kind of just delete this uh, irrelevant geometry. In the particles, make sure it's using the modifier stack. Maybe we can have it so that when it hits the ground, it can kill the particles so that we don't get like all this insane excess. So I can make this go lower so it basically kills a bunch of uh, unneeded particles. That should also make this faster. Let's give it even more particles, which will take a bit to calculate. But of course, we kind of cache these, which can be done as simply as hitting a cache. All of this should be fine. Click bake. Okay, not the best thing in the world, but I will take it. I'm just going to make a basic uh, particle that we are going to instance. Hit render. What's it going to render like? An object. What's that object? It's called Icosphere. Randomize the scale. Make the scale much smaller. We don't want to show the emitter so that you only see the uh, particles. You can also do that in the uh, viewport. So it kind of represents that. Eh, it definitely is better to have it than to not have it, right? What about object info? Go to random. Oh, we can use this to add even a bigger hit of detail. So let's actually do that. I'm going to mix color. Let's multiply this kind of like black and white mask with the color here. So this way, set this to one. Uh, so this way I get a bit of extra detail that I would not have had otherwise. So noise texture. Take this. We're going to turn it into normal mapping. And I swear this is 100% worth it. Connect it to the normal. Here is before and after. Maybe easier to see it from this side. Before and after. Dear God. Okay. We can also do the same thing with the grass. Mix color. What are we mixing by? A multiplication. Copy the color. 100%. Let's make sure it doesn't get as dark. So 0 to 1. 0.5 to 1. Let's just see what a uh, render looks like. Oh yeah. Okay. That's adding stupid detail. Awesome. Okay. Uh, this is, it's over. We did it. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Okay. Goodbye.